What's up everybody, The Amazing here bringing you a review of the Metacom, also known as Mafex, Amazing Spider-Man 2 from the movie, well, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Well, let's get started on the figure. First off, we want to talk about how highly anticipated this figure is. There's a DX set coming out sometime in December or January. Most likely it will get pushed back and delayed just like this one was. Uh, a few other things are, yeah, I got it. Everyone's highly anticipated on it. I'm going to get to it. Whatever. In any case, there are some things that seem off about the figure. And the first thing I want to touch on is, on the box, you clearly see that it's a lighter blue. Whereas you open the figure, see, on the box is a lighter blue. Or it seems to be more of a classic blue and not so metallic shine and finish. Whereas the open product is definitely that. So I feel like Medicom actually changed something last minute. I don't know what it was. I guess it was some license or right stuff. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was changed. But overall with the figure, we're going to get started. So first up, I want to talk about how it has a semi-metallic sort of design to it. There's no more matte-like design, which I very much enjoyed. And the webbing is raised. It doesn't blend in the suit like you originally had thought so to be. Which, in my opinion, is okay, but... It's not what I really wanted. I was really hoping for something to be way more comic book accurate, like we were first shown. And that's okay. It's okay. It's still a Spider-Man. It's still a Spider-Man. Now I'm going to get on to the eyes. First up with the eyes, there's a lot going on. It's not the yellow anymore. So you don't have to freak out. There is a light color translucent to it. So when you take pictures with it, it should show the pure whiteness in it. It's really cool, and it also prevented from getting dirty. Really cool. Next up, neck articulation. You can rotate all the way around. He can look up. He can look down. He can tilt the head left and right. Arms are not like the Mafex Batman, which is why they're doing the 2.0. You can rotate all the way around without it popping off. You can go out. You can go in. You can rotate it in and out. Lots of ball joint rotation. Now, the huge problem that I do have is that I feel like the hips and the waist were changed. Because here had more ab crunch the first time around than it does now. So as you can see, that's how far I can get. But, they clearly made up for that because you can literally bend forward this way. So Spider-Man can still get in all his crouching poses and rotate. And do all the things he needs to do. But the ab crunch, some of it is lost. It is not like the previous suit. As you clearly see, it doesn't bend all the way in like the first one. So that's something you want to look forward to and take care of. As far as the arms, there is bicep swivel. You can rotate it. It's rotating on the joint in the hands. It's on both hands. But like I said, here's where you have most of the fun. Most Spider-Man figures, well, as of late, outside the McFarlane, you don't get... The range of motion in the legs that you would need. Whereas this one, you know, he can touch his toes. There's a ball joint and a swivel inside. Needs a double joint, no issues. The ball joint can clearly rotate and ankle pivot as well as toe pivot. So you can definitely reach all sorts of Spider Man poses. That you would not normally get with a, Marvel, with a normal Marvel Legend. There's even a little bit of SH Figure Arts technology. We can pull out the joint here. And go up much higher. So your Spidey could be a ballerina. Or not. You know. I prefer the can-can dancers. Whatever you want to be. So back up. We're going to get into a little bit of the accessories that he comes with. Well, I sit here and balance him out. So he doesn't look like a go-go dancer. Oh, son of a biscuit. Stay up. So while he sits there thugging it out, I'm going to get some accessories. He comes with two web shooters. So you can do the web shooting pose. Just like the last one. Really cool stuff. You rotate it. But, well, I said rotate. Wow. What you're going to do is you're going to take off the hand pivot. Just like the last one, you're going to put it here and then put the hand back on. And it goes in between the ball joint. And don't mind me, I'm just being a goofball. But yeah, you clearly see how that goes. Also, I'm going to swap the hand real fast because he comes with a hand that allows him to hold the weapon in hand. And that's pretty cool. 
So. Oh, one thing I want to touch up on before I forget. This is a different pivot than the first Spider-Man. So it, it still works if you pop it into the first Spider-Man's hand. But just know that it's still technically a different pivot. So you may have some... Some people may have issues, some people won't. Like I said, you can place the weapon in hand. And it comes with two hands for it, so you can do the web swing with two hands. But you can clearly hold the weapon that it comes with in hand. That's not a lightning rod, and he's not happy to see you. Don't worry about it. But as far as the slew of hands, I'm going to go through the hands right now. Spider-Man actually comes with the open palm hands. To, as by default, not the closed fist. So he comes with the open hand. Then there's spider posing hands. So these are the open palm ones, which is what you normally see when you wall crawl. There's two of each. You have the web, web shooter hands. Again, two of each. Web swinging hands. Or, you know, some people will call them thumbs up hands because they're going to use it for that too. And you have closed fists. Two of each. And like I said, the default hands they come with where it's open. Now, real quick, I'm going to do an in scale photo for you so you can see what the scale is like for the Mafex Spider Man compared to other figures. So, for once, you guys are going to laugh at me because it's in scale with Marvel Legends. I feel like that's where the torso issue comes from because they made this, the figure actually a bit bigger. Because when you think about it, the figure is a bit bigger, so the torso will have to be a little different for him to be in scale and to be larger to work with Marvel Legends. So yes, he is in scale with Marvel Legends. Mafex Spider-Man, I repeat, is in scale with Marvel Legends. He's actually taller than SH Figure Arts. So as you can see next to Excel Trial, he is a lot bigger. As far as DC figures, they're probably going to be around the same height because most of the time the Mattel stuff, use, or, well DC Direct stuff is kind of huge, they're around 7 inches. For the most part, it is definitely in scale Marvel Legends, and, you know, so now you can have them you know, fight off your Wrecking Crew, your Hand Ninjas, uh, join your Avengers, you can even have them join your Figma Avengers, he might be a little bit taller than Cap though. But yeah, I guess it works out. Overall, I'm going to give the Mafex Spidey an 8 out of 10. Um, outside of the things that I did not like, I would have given it a perfect 10. It would have been like the first one. This is something you should be definitely buy. It's not even expensive. And it would probably get a 10 out of 10 when the DX set comes out. Because it's probably going to work on things that uh, it failed to just fix. Definitely the ab crunch is definitely the first issue. Oh, one more thing I forgot. He also comes with a, a stand. I know people always complain that they don't get stands. It comes with a posable articulated stand. Just like Tamashi stages. So, eat your heart out. But definitely, um, I want to point out that it's still an excellent figure. It has the posability of the McFarlane. It has the glare of the movie figure. So you kind of get the best and the worst of stuff. But if you are missing out on a Spider-Man figure and you want something to be excellent and posable and you did not like the first movie outfits but you, love, you just love Spider-Man, this is a figure that you may want to get. Definitely 8 out of 10. Um, we'll give it a 10 out of 10, but I can't tell you until I get a DX set. That's probably going to be an automatic 10 because it comes with a slew of new accessories. I probably won't wait on it, though. It's going to get expensive. If you guys are asking when you get it from, I'm going to put the link at the end of the review in it so you guys can find it. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate it. Later.